So uh, let's start. Uh, today, uh, we have a great pleasure. Uh, actually, for me, it's a great pleasure to see again after two years, almost two years, a good friend of mine, which is Fabio, Fabio Mara. Fabio Mara is a pro full professor of medicine at the, at the University of uh, Florence. And Fabio is a world leader in hepatology, re particularly related to the fibrosis and all the molecular mechanisms involved in fibrotic, in metabolism, and hepatocarcinogenesis. Fabio was good enough to uh, accept our in the invitation, and we have now pleased to have him uh, addressing us on the protein kinase ERK5 as a modulator of hepatic carcinogenesis and metabolism. Fabio, it's all yours. We cannot hear you any longer. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, now I got the, yeah, the, the, the settings got screwed up in some way, I don't know why. First of all, I would like to uh, thank Claudio for the nice invitation. It would be much nicer to meet in person in Trieste, and, but it's, uh, it's good enough to use the, the telematic system to, uh, to share some new data about the, the work we are currently doing at our unit. The surrogate. They yes, call it surrogate. It's a surrogate, exactly. Okay, let's see if I can, if I'm able to share the screen. Okay. Okay, I hope you can see the, I hope you can see the first slide and in the presentation mode. Okay, as Cloud introduced the, uh, the, the topic of today's seminar is this protein kinase, ERK5, that has been the focus of our research for the last approximately 10, 12 years. And I, I would share with you some uh, of the data that have been accumulating over the past few years and some new and unpublished data we're working on at this time. Now, the uh, ERK5 is uh, it's a member of the well-known family of the myelogen activated protein kinase family. As you well know, the, one of the best known uh, members of this family is the ERK2, that is the first MAP kinase that was actually cloned and characterized. The activation of this group of kinases is based on a cascade of kinases, like for example, for ERK1-2, there is activation of uh, RAS that activates uh, RAF, that in turn activates a MAP kinase kinase, that in this case is MAC1-2, that leads to dual phosphorylation of ERK1-2 that uh, uh, becomes fully active and phosphorylated. A similar cascade is operating for this ERK5, where ERK5 is obviously the mitogen activated protein kinase, the uh, MAP kinase kinase is MAC5, and the MAP3K is represented, is represented by MAC kinase kinase 2, 3. Like for other members of the, protein, of the MAP kinase family, once it's activated, ERK5 may migrate to the nucleus and uh, uh, phosphorylate and activate a number of downstream kinases that is actually very uh, abundant, uh, like uh, transcription regulators, especially MEF2, especially MEF2C, but also CMYK, some members of the FOXO family, some STATs, some other kinases, like, for example, RISC or P90 RISC and AKT, some cyclins, and this kinase is able to regulate the cell cycle and also to inactivate uh, cell cycle inhibitors like P27 or P21 and cytokines and growth factors. In terms of upstream activators of the kinase, you can see that cellular stress, mitogens, and uh, cytokines growth factors may uh, lead to activation of ERK5. Now, this kinase has a peculiarity compared to other members of the MAP kinase family that uh, I would like to recall are not only ERK5, but for example, June and terminal kinase and the P38 um, MAP kinase, because it has a canonical pathway that is the one that I just described to you that leads to the dual phosphorylation of the kinase domain of ERK5 and to direct target phosphorylation. Here you can see some of the uh, target uh, molecules that were uh, described in the previous uh, cartoon. But this is also known as the big MAC kinase because it has a higher molecular weight uh, uh, compared to the other kinases. 
and uh, has another uh, it has another uh, series of domains like uh, a nuclear localization signal and the trans activation domain now this trans activation domain works as a transcriptional co-activator independently of the action of the kinase uh, uh, action of the of the molecule so it may uh, work as a transcriptional co-activator in a dual way one is similar to the other map kinases that is direct target phosphorylation and another is a direct transcriptional co-activator once it localizes in the nucleus and interacts with the promoters of different uh, molecules like for example again MEF2, MEF2C or AP1 and this is important because its activation well when we measure its activation this is only one way by which the kinase works and the other it's uh, direct and nuclear localization uh, studies with the uh, genetic inactivation of ERT5 has shown that the mice with the uh, homozygous uh, deletion of the ERT5 gene um, do not uh, develop and uh, die embryonically because of alteration of the vascular and cardiovascular system and one of the areas that uh, it's uh, more actively controlled by ERT5 is the vessel integrity and of course vasoprotection but also the protection of the myocardium from uh, a number of different insults and there are also other mm, mesenchymal tissues that are controlled by ERT5 like the skeletal muscle and mineralization this is important because I will show you some of the mm, data where angiogenesis is one of the targets uh, of uh, the activity of uh, all right, fine. We started the, uh, to get interested in uh, this kind of through a collaboration with Dr. Rovida, who is an experimental pathologist working at our university, the collaboration with whom is longstanding and it's still, uh, it's still operating now. We started, and uh, Claudio mentioned that, with our interest in the mechanisms of uh, hepatic fibrosis, and uh, more than 10 years ago, we evaluated the possible role of this kinase in regulating the um, biology of the uh, hepatic stellate cells. So these are cultured human hepatic stellate cells, and these are uh, two mitogens that are well known to activate the um, hepatic stellate cells, plated the right growth factor or epidermal growth factor. As you can see here, there is a clear induction of ERT5 phosphorylation that shows in a western block as a doublet and uh, this also induce, uh, induces uh, activation also the uh, exposure of the stellar cells with epidermal growth factor another observation that we made is that pdgf induces nuclear translocation of earth 5 as you can see here with the double staining with the hoxt 33 342 there is a clear uh, translocation of the um, of the of the kinase and when we isolated the cytosolic and nuclear extracts you can uh, clearly see that the um, that the uh, induction where the exposure to pdgf induces nuclear translocation functionally when we inhibit uh earth 5 with uh, small interfering rnas that are uh, functioning uh, here as you can see here with the pdgf uh, with exposure to pdgf we observed the reduced phosphorylation uh, and reduced proliferation of uh, stellate cells together with reduced activation of uh, factors that regulate proliferation such as for example uh, cjun so in this uh, uh, first observations we uh, created a connection between A connection between the uh, cells that are effectors of hepatic fibrosis. I'm sure you are all aware that uh, stellate cells are responsible for the majority of collagen and extracellular matrix production uh, during fibrogenesis, and this kind is very fine. But eventually, we moved to another area that has been very hot in the field of ERT5 and of MAP kinases at large. That is the regulation of the of carcinogenesis in the liver, and I will show you two sets of data. 
one uh, that has been published a few years ago and another has been published just a few months ago, where we demonstrate the link between activation of ERK5 and uh, carcinogenesis uh, in hepatocellular carcinoma and cholangial carcinoma. This arises from the observation that ERK5 is uh, potentially capable of regulating all the hallmarks of cancers. You know, this uh, cartoon is actually very well known. It represents the, it represents the uh, hallmarks of cancers and through the regulation of a number of molecules downstream of ERK5, some of which we have already discussed, such as uh, MEF2, for example, or C-June, or cycling uh, uh, dependent kinase inhibitors, or STUT3, a number of different actions that are relevant for the uh, development and progression of cancer may be potentially regulated by ERK5. And as a matter of fact, in a number of different uh, uh, tumors like uh, prostate cancer, melanoma, breast cancer, ERK5 has been demonstrated as a relevant regulator of uh, carcinogenesis. So the, uh, the research in uh, cancer has also been facilitated by the relatively recent uh, development of MEK5 and ERK5 inhibitors. We have been working mostly with the XMD892 and the AX15836 that are ERK5 inhibitors. Now, like many other of these inhibitors, they should be considered as proof of concept tools because they are not pure inhibitors. They also work in other systems. But together with the genetic evidence that ERK5 is implicated in certain uh, in certain biological activities, they are helpful in defining uh, the possible translational role of uh, uh, ERK5. Now you see that there are a number of roles in cancers, as I anticipated, most of which are uh, proliferation and survival of cancer cells, epithelial in chemical transition and metastasis, especially regulating cell motility and invasion, regulation of the cancer stem cell-like feature, resistance to uh, drugs that uh, chemotherapeutic drugs and also more recently immunosuppression and angiogenesis. Mm, as I anticipated, aberrant uh, MAC5, ERK5 expression has been uh, shown in a number of tumors like melanoma, prostate, breast, colorectal cancer. Amplification of the gene, MAPK7 is the gene encoding for ERK5, has been demonstrated in hepatocellular carcinoma in some studies that were, um, were uh, published approximately 10 years ago. And this is, a, uh, this is a table that, of course, you know, I will not get into any detail, but it's just to show you that in a recent review, a number of different tumors were the possible, and this is in humans, where the possible role of this kinase has been hypothesized, has been published. Here with the arrows, I marked uh, the studies on HCC, uh, where increased st staining has been uh, demonstrated. And one of these studies is also one that we have published and I will show you in a moment, both in hepatocellular carcinoma and uh, cholangiocarcinoma. In cholangiocarcinoma, there was a um, correlation with portal tract invasion of tumor cells in HCC. No clear um, clinical outcome could be associated with increased staining of, uh, with the ERK5 antibodies. Now, this is a study that we uh, conducted a few years ago in hepatocellular carcinoma based on the um, based on uh, the information that was available at the time uh, showing that uh, in uh, solid cancer, ERK5 could have a role. Now here, as you can see, uh, comparing a normal liver, uh, cirrhotic liver surrounding HCC, as you well know, hepatocellular carcinoma develops in approximately 80, 90% of cases in the context of a Damaged liver and cirrhosis represents the major risk factor for this type of cancer. As you can see here, there is a staining that is increased, the, the brown color is increased compared to the normal liver. But what you can actually notice 
especially at the higher magnification, is that while the nuclei are not staining in, stained in brown in the normal liver, they are stained in brown in both cirrhosis and HCC. And when we quantificated this, quantified this, uh, uh, this staining, you can see that the um, nuclear stained cells are significantly uh, higher in all cases of hepatocellular carcinoma and of cirrhosis, irrespective of the etiology uh, based on alcoholic liver disease, the HBV or HCV. What you should note here is that uh, there is no difference comparing uh, HCC and cirrhosis, uh, uh, allowing us to hypothesize that uh, uh, activation or at least the nuclear localization of this kind is, is an early event that precedes the malignant transformation that is uh, associated with cirrhosis. We conducted both in vitro and in vivo studies showing that uh, ERK5 has a functional role in the biology of hepatocellular carcinoma cells. We used the two sets of cells, the HUH7 and uh, the uh, HEPG2 cells. Most of the data that I will be showing is uh, based on uh, HUH7. Here is the small interfering RNAs against uh, ERK5 showing that in cells uh, <clears throat> allowed to, to grow uh, after silencing of ERK5, there is a reduced growth. And uh, when we use the XMD892, that is the pharmacologic inhibitor, we observed a similar uh, biologic effect. And when we looked at the um, cell, cell cycle analysis with the uh, ERK5 inhibitor, we observed an accumulation of the cells in the G0, G1 phase uh, together with the reduced uh, percentage of cells entering the S phase comparable with an anti-proliferative effect. Interestingly, this was associated with uh, an upregulation of the CDK inhibitor P27, showing that uh, this could be one of the mechanisms regulating the reduced proliferation of these cells and also a reduced activation of the AKT. And as you know, the uh, PI3 kinase, the AKT pathway, is an important pathway for both cell proliferation, but also for metabolism, as we will see in the uh, last part of the seminar. Uh, Interferently with the ERK5 also affected the cell migration, both migration and invasion here. The difference is that the uh, filter is not covered when we assess migration, whereas it's coded with a basement membrane-like matrix when we measure invasion, because in this cell, so the cell, in this case, the cells to move also need to uh, destroy the matrix, and this is something that recapitulates what happens in a solid organ when the cells uh, clear the basement membrane and uh, uh, invade the, the, the organ and then metastasize. And um, looking at the, and looking at the um, staining of the, uh, of ERK5 uh, together with the uh, uh, phosphorylated focal adhesion kinase and the cytoskeleton as measured by staining with beta actin, you can clearly see that when compared to mock transfected cells, when the cells are silenced for ERK5, there is a disruption of the cytoskeleton and that goes well along with the inability of the cells to migrate. Um, the, the, we also observed that uh, there is a, a modulation of the cells involved in hepatocyte proliferation. This is another cell cycle a summary of cell cycle experiments, not done with the pharmacologic inhibitors, but actually with the short herpin for ERK5. And again, here we see an accumulation of the cells in the G0, G1 phase and the reduction of the number of cells in the G2 M phase together with increased expression of P27. We decided to obtain some in vivo relevance of these findings moving to a model of subcutaneous injection of HUH7 cells, either uh, transfected with non targeting uh, short herpin uh, uh, RNAs, this is clearly the control, or with short herpins that were targeting ERK5. The cells were injected in nude mice, uh, and after approximately uh, 
six weeks the mice were, uh, 28 days the mice were uh, sacrificed and uh, we observed that, that both the number of animals with palpable tumors and the size of tumor was markedly and significantly reduced in cells uh, uh, in, uh, transfected with uh, short herpin RNAs uh, targeting ERK5. We also look, uh, used the, the, um, uh, the XMD inhibitor. In this case, we uh, allowed the tumors to grow until they were palpable. And then at this point, the mice were randomized to receive vehicle or to receive XMD 892 and were followed for approximately two more weeks. And as you can see, there is a clear uh, divarication of the two curves where the mice were treated with vehicle increased uh, uh, almost ex exponentially the, uh, amount of the, the size of the tumor, whereas these tumors were much uh, smaller when the, um, uh, when the mice were treated with XMD-892. When we dissected out these tumors and analyzed some of the molecular features of these tumors, we observed that uh, mice that were injected with uh, BRDU, that as you know is a marker of cell proliferation measuring, uh, uh, measuring the uh, mm, DNA synthesis, so you can actually see that the um, number of cells, the, the nuclei that were labeled with BRDU was significantly smaller in mice receiving the ERK5 inhibitor and also C-June expression was significantly lower in these mice. MEF2 was less abundant. I would like to recall that MEF2 is one of the downstream effectors of R5. And also C-REL, that is a protein belonging to the uh, NF-kappa-B family that is involved in cell proliferation. So this makes in, makes, in our opinion, a nice story where uh, we demonstrate that R5 could be participating at least in an in vitro and an in vivo system to the, um, to the proliferation and development of hepatocellular carcinoma. This is a summary slide where basically uh, it uh, uh, summarizes the data in the, um, in the patients and the fact that we use two cell lines where we observe reduced proliferation migration and invasiveness and also the data in uh, uh, in vivo. After this uh, study, other data accumulated and it became evident that there is another uh, aspect that where ERK5 activation may be important. That is uh, the uh, sort of an escape route uh, for cancer cells that are under the pressure of MAP kinase inhibitor. Now, as you know, several MAP kinase inhibitor or several inhibitors of, for example, angiogenesis work on the ras raf uh, system, and uh, this leads to activation of ERK12. Blockade of ERK12 in several tumors may lead to the uh, activation of the ERK5 uh, system leading to um, an alternative route for cell proliferation and a mechanism of resistance to drugs that interfere with the ERK12 activation or activation of, of upstream pathways. And uh, this has been very recently shown in a study that uh, has been conducted both uh, in uh, experimental model and uh, in uh, patients with hepatocellular carcinoma treated with lenvatinib. Lenvatinib is a small kinase inhibitor that has been approved for the first line treatment of uh, hepatocellular carcinoma. And uh, here, I mean, it's a very complex study, but the, the, basically the uh, cells that were exposed to uh, Lenvatinib showed an upregulation of uh, the phosphorylated form of ERK5, indicating that blocking the, uh, one of the pathway leads to activation of the uh, of the other pathway through uh, phosphorylation of uh, ERK5. And uh, the important thing is that uh, an, if an inhibitor of EGF, like for example. Uh, 
gefitinib or erlotinib of, of other kinases, such as, for example, FRAX 1036 is used, there is uh, um, an inhibition of the ability of the cells to uh, proliferate. And this is well represented here in this cartoon, where uh, upon inhibition of MAC12 and ERK2 with lembatinib, the pathway that is regulated by EG, the EGF receptor is activated and uh, through activation of PEC2 and ERK5 and dual inhibition with an ERK5, with an EGF receptor inhibits or silences ERK5 and leads to uh, a more effective inhibition of uh, this pathway. And this was also shown in a small cohort of uh, patients. So showing that this could be important as a dual mechanism of regulation. In the second part of this talk, I will actually uh, um, present you some more recent data that we published a few weeks and months ago, looking at the uh, activation of the role of the activation of uh, ERK5 in cholangiocarcinoma. Cholangiocarcinoma is um, is actually not as common and have, as hepatocellular carcinoma, but especially the intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma in its uh, uh, mass forming form is uh, the incidence of this tumor has been increasing in the last uh, two decades. The important thing is that we have very, very few weapons to counteract the um, intracellular, uh, the um, intracellular CCA. And um, uh, this uh, uh, calls for a new, uh, new studies that are meant to, uh, uh, to disclose the possible new targets for therapy. Another difference uh, between cholangiocarcinoma and uh, hepatocellular carcinoma is the microenvironment. The microenvironment of uh, cholangiocarcinoma is uh, it, it's, uh, very typical because it has a lot of cancer-associated fibroblasts, a number of immune cells uh, and uh, endothelial cells, but also um, a very thick, uh, a very thick uh, fibrous tissue that uh, sort of like surrounds the uh, cholangiocarcinoma cells. Here in this study that was published, uh, like I said, a few weeks ago in hepatology, we first looked at the expression of ERK5 in, uh, uh, in cells with, uh, in uh, cholangiocarcinoma cells. And uh, we looked at that compared to normal human cholangiocytes, the, uh, both the CCLT1 and HUCCT1 that are two uh, cell lines derived, the stable cell lines derived from um, cholangiocarcinoma overexpress uh, ERK5. And this was also found in, uh, was also found in cells, in primary cells, isolated from cholangiocarcinomas that were, um, were isolated from tumors uh, dissected from, actually from patients. Exposure of these cells to uh, fetal bovine serum caused the uh, nuclear translocation of ERK5, both in HUCCT1 and in CCLP1, and uh, also the expression at the mRNA level was higher in uh, both primary and uh, line cell and cells uh, of the established cell lines. When we looked at patients, uh, we observed that comparing the cholangiocarcinoma with the surrounding liver, the uh, expression of uh, ERK5 mRNA was significantly ha higher in uh, cholangiocarcinoma. Looking at the, nu at the number of uh, CCA samples here, uh, comparing uh, 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 cholangiocarcinoma less aggressive based on the histologic grade, that these are grade one, two, and in this case only one tumor out of 40 had uh, ERK5 nuclear staining, whereas seven out of 47 G3 cancers had ERK5 nuclear, uh, nuclear staining. You can actually see here the staining uh, with the anti-ERK5 antibody, showing that uh, increased ERK5 staining it goes well along with the uh, aggressiveness of the tumor at the histological level. And uh, here again, this is, uh, uh, this is shown based on 
the general ERC-5 staining and not just the nuclear stain. So what the point we can make here is that ERC-5 is overexpressed in cell primary and established cell lines and it's, it's overexpressed then in the nucleus of uh, tumors that are more aggressive. Again here we first looked at the mm, we first looked at the um, uh, in vitro studies where we used the uh, short herpin uh, uh, RNAs directed against the ERK5 compared to non-targeting RNAs and looked at the, in both the HUCCT1 and CCLP1 at a number of biological uh, activities relevant for um, the uh, cancer aggressiveness. And as you can see here, both uh, cell number uh, in both cell types, BRDU uptake, MTT, that is a descriptor of the number of cells, uh, is uh, reduced when we interfere with short herpin RNAs with the uh, abundance of uh, uh, ERK5. When we uh, silence ERK5, we not only, of course, see uh, reduced abundance of ERK5 itself, but we also see reduced um, uh, expression of peripheral cell nuclear antigen, that is a marker of cell proliferation. Also, in this case, we see increased expression of P27, um, indicating a reduced attitude of the cells to uh, proliferate. And these are the barographs that are based on a number of at least three, four experiments uh, quantifying the Western blots. Uh, the uh, inhibition with the inhibitor, with the pharmacologic inhibitor, basically uh, phenocopied the, the data that we obtained with the uh, ERK5 uh, short therapy in RNA. I'm going very fast here. Again, you see some number, BRDU, uh, so the regulation of the cell phase with the G1, G0, G0, G1 arrest, uh, and uh, uh, again, a reduction of the number of cells entering mitosis. <clears throat> Migration was also another was also another uh, aspect that was uh, interfered with uh, the um, short herpin RNA, and this is basically cell migration, and uh, uh, that is uh, markedly and significantly reduced. And there is also interference with a number of uh, signaling pathways that uh, uh, regulate uh, motility. Here you see phosphorylated myelin, myosin, light chain kinase two that is uh, reduced by silencing ERK5 and also phosphopaxilin that is important for the rearrangement of the uh, cytoskeleton. And an aspect that was very important here, and I alluded to that uh, in commenting one of the earlier slides, uh, is that the regulation of the proangiogenic factors by ERK5 in uh, cells of intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma. We here observed that upon silencing of ERK5, both angiopoietin 1 and VGF were significantly reduced. And once we collected conditioned medium from uh, uh, um, cholangiocarcinoma cells and challenged the um, uh, human umbilical vein endothelial cells with this conditioned medium, the ability to form uh, tubes when the cells were exposed to a medium, uh, conditioned medium from cells silenced with the ERK5 short hairpin RNAs was uh, significantly lower. And uh, this occurred for both cells, uh, HUCCP1 and CCLP1. And this is important because it shows that uh, the regulation of uh, ERK5 is not only on the characteristic of the cancer cell itself, but is also potentially able to work on the um, cholangiocarcinoma microenvironment. And uh, this is actually, I'm, I'm first will comment this cartoon because I'm not showing for, uh, in the interest of time, some other data showing that uh, ERK5 uh, regulates also the recruitment of mesenchymal cells, such as, for example, myofibroblasts, and also uh, to recruit monocytes demonstrating that it has the ability to potentially uh, regulate several components of the uh, tumor microenvironment. This is, on the other hand, the in vivo data also is another example of a xenograft in nude mice 
as you can see here, there is uh, a clearly increased tumor volume in the uh, mock transfector when we inject more transfected cells compared to um, cells where the, the were targeted with the ERK5 RNAs where basically almost no tumors appear or appear at a very small size. Here we conducted the VEVO analysis that is an ultrasound based system to monitor in vivo the uh, growth of the tumor and this again uh, compared to the caliber uh, shows the reduction of the short term in RNA. We are working now to two other areas. One is the interference of ERK5 and hypoxia. We have obtained some very preliminary data indicating that there might be a crosstalk between ERK5 and hypoxia that characterizes the microenvironment of ICCA cells, and also to the possible regulation of ERK5 with the uh, stem-like features of uh, ICCA cells. In the Last part of this talk, I will discuss some un unpublished data that we are obtaining in a other uh, setting of hepatology, that is the um, dysmetabolic uh, liver disease, and especially NEFLD. You're all familiar with the spectrum of NEFLD, accumulation of fat, NASH that is characterized by inflammation and uh, ballooning and uh, liver damage, fibrosis production and appearance of the hepatocellular carcinoma and the compensated cirrhosis. This uh, progression is due to the fact that there is a lipotoxic injury that is uh, um, occurring in NASH and this leads to activation of prophagenic pathways and uh, NASH fibrosis. The accumulation of uh, fat within the liver is uh, made possible by insulin resistance that leads to increased lipolysis and uh, the novel lipogenesis, increasing the free fatty acid pool within the hepatocyte. These free fatty acids undergo oxidation, lead, uh, leading to generation of reactive oxygen species, but also to formation of triglycerides that are accumulated in the hepatocytes or uh, are secreted as VLDL conditioning atherogenic dyslipidemia. Insulin resistance is very important and it occurs both at the liver, at the hepatic level and at the adipose tissue level. And the molecular mechanisms of insulin resistance are understood, but only partially. And once the fat accumulates in the liver, it generates toxic lipids that, like I said earlier, generates uh, ROS, ER stress, inflammation, and cell death. To analyze whether ERK5 might be uh, relevant for uh, the generation of insulin resistance in a model of, uh, um, in a model of fatty liver, we created uh, um, a mice with hepatocyte-specific deletion of ERK5 where, that I will call ERK5 delta hep uh, using the classical uh, model crossing alb -cree, um, animals with uh, ERK5 uh, animals uh, with ERK5 cloned between the uh, LOXP sites. This led to generation of uh, mice where we observed the, the expected uh, Mm, the expected DNA changes and when isolated primary murine hepatocytes were, there was a very clear and marked reduction in the expression of ERK5 indicating that the construct was actually working. We uh, challenged these mice with a high fat diet. Uh, we had uh, control mice uh, with uh, normal chow on high fat diet and delta hep uh, uh, ERK5 mice with chow and the high fat diet. The 60% of calories were from fat or they were treated with a chow diet for 16 weeks. There were only modest effects in terms of general metabolism. The serum triglycerides were basically similar. There was a small increase in the total cholesterol and there was also an increase in visceral fat that, that it's kind of surprising because our uh, our model has deletion of ERK5 only in the hepatocytes, 
and this is something we will be studying on the side. The interesting thing is that uh, the weight of the mice that uh, were um, deleted with the ERK5 in hepatosex was not lower, was, um, was, actually, was actually slightly higher uh, than the mice uh, um, challenged with the, uh, the normal mice challenged with the high fat diet. And uh, the uh, glucose levels uh, at baseline were uh, slightly lower in, uh, in mice uh, knockout for ERK5 in hepatocytes. The uh, food intake was similar, was actually a little lower in, uh, a little lower in mice uh, with uh, deletion of ERK5 and the ALT levels were slightly higher in uh, uh, hepatocyte-specific ERK5 knockout mice. The interesting thing is that uh, although these mice, I'm going one back, were uh, actually consuming less food and were actually a little, um, uh, were no uh, heavier than the other mice, the glucose tolerance test showed that mice with the uh, Hepatocyte specific deletion of ERK5 were less insulin sensitive than the, um, um, the, with the control counterpart. This is the glucose tolerance test, and this is the area under the curve of the averaging the whole mice. You can see that the uh, blood glucose levels are much higher in the knockout mice than in the control mice and also the area under the curve is significantly higher. When we challenge these mice with the insulin tolerance test, the drop in blood glucose is much uh, less impressive in the knockout mice. And again, the uh, area under the curve is higher in the knockout mice, uh, indicating a reduced sensitivity to insulin in vivo in these mice where uh, ERK5 was delayed in hepatocytes. So we uh, started using a murine model of um, hepatocytes. There are these MMH cells that were uh, kindly provided by Professor Tripodi in Rome. These are very well differentiated cells, are immortalized cells that are easily transfectable. And we use these cells to dissect out at a signaling level what is happening with this uh, ERK5 manipulation. And, uh, one of the mechanisms that leads to insulin resistance in the uh, high fat diet is a reduced activation of AKT that is downstream of the PI3 kinase PDK1 pathway. And this AKT regulates a number of uh, uh, actions related to survival and also to metabolism. Now, when we look at the cells uh, uh, silence for ERK5, uh, stimulated with insulin, AKT was uh, less activated than in control cells, indicating that activation of this pathway is crippled when we delete uh, short ERK5. In, uh, in these experiments and in all the other experiments I'm going to show you, these are experiments in vitro where MMH cells were manipulated with short ERK in RNA. And uh, <clears throat> the another pathway that leads to the pathway that leads to AKT is the activation of the insulin resistance that activates the insulin receptor substrate one two with the phosphorylation on uh, uh, on both the residues in uh, uh, tyrosine but also in serine. The serine phosphorylation is uh, brought about by other kinases such as for example JAK and has a and it has a negative effect on insulin sensitivity because it leads to, um, uh, leads to reduced uh, activation of downstream AKT and PKC-Z. And this leads to insulin resistance. So what uh, did we find in these cells? We, know, we saw that these cells uh, have uh, a reduced oxygen consumption rate showing that Metabolism of these cells uh, with the seahorse analysis uh, is uh, uh, lower, is different than cells uh, treated with uh, non-targeting uh, RNAs. And uh, also the uh, ability to um, exert a glycolysis is lower. 
And this is probably related to a reduced glucose uptake because when we, these cells were challenged with uh, radio labeled the glucose, we observed a reduced ability to internalize the glucose. And this occurred irrespective of the expression of the major glucose transporter in these cells, that is GLUT2. One of the things, uh, one of the studies we came across while conducting this experiment is this study uh, published a couple of years in Nature Communications showing that in uh, <clears throat> cardiac myocytes, uh, attenuated ERK5 signaling is uh, associated with mitochondrial dysfunction. So we wanted to look at uh, mitochondria and we observed that uh, the uh, mitochondrial membrane potential when the cells are silenced for ERK5 is reduced uh, as you can show, as uh, you can see here with this TMRE staining uh, compared to this nice peak that is present in non-targeted cells. And another point uh, that uh, was uh, actually interesting is that a little bit uh, uh, um, counterintuitively, the number of mitochondria was actually higher in these silent cells, possibly as an attempt to compensate for the reduced, reduced function of mitochondria. The master regulator of mitochondrial biogenesis uh, is the PGC1 alpha, the uh, regulator that uh, has been cloned as a target of uh, the nuclear factor P par gamma. And uh, when we looked at uh, MMH cells uh, silenced for ERK5, these are the short herpin, the control short herpin, and these are two different uh, types of uh, uh, short herpins, we observed that the amount of uh, mm, the amount of trib3 that is a molecule that regulates uh, negatively regulates AKT was uh, upregulated in uh, in these cells and this was associated with upregulation of p38 and june kinase that are two um, uh, <clears throat> two kinases that are responsible for phosphorylation of the insulin, uh, rece uh, insulin receptor substrate on serin residues, and as I showed you, to generate insulin resistance. And uh, this was also shown when the cells were exposed to a protocol that is uh, reminiscent of the lipotoxicity that occurs uh, in uh, the context of NAFLD. The cells were exposed to insulin after pretreatment with palmitic acid, that is the cytotoxic uh, uh, fatty acid. And interestingly, as you can see here, these cells had a markedly increased expression of TRIP3 of PGC1 alpha, while activation of AKT was markedly reduced compared to control cells. <clears throat> And this was associated with an increased uh, experiment, with an increased abundance of uh, IRS1 phosphorylated on serum residues, again associated with TRIB3 abundance, again indicating that this mechanism of insulin resistance is activated if we silence ERK5. This is uh, another block where we show that uh, uh, June kinase. Uh, activation is uh, associated with the serine phosphorylation of IRS1, uh, possibly creating a link between this uh, serine uh, uh, threonine kinase and uh, phosphorylation of IRS1. This uh, system, I'm almost done, this system is uh, possibly regulated by the, uh, uh, by uh, reactive oxygen species because one of the action of the ARC5 is to modulate the antioxidant response. And uh, we, I, I'm gonna, uh, gonna skip this. And we observed again here that in uh, the, here we are going back to the, uh, to the mice showing that TRIB3, that is one of the effectors of this system is uh, upregulated also in mice where uh, ARC5 is knocked down and uh, this is uh, the summary cartoon of all these experiments that i hope uh, it will be uh, putting together all of these pieces what we believe is happening in the model of uh, um, 
in the model of uh, uh, high fat diet is that uh, in the absence of ERK5, the metabolic stress that generates the ROS and uh, uh, activates June kinase is not uh, counteracted by ERK5 that, as I showed you, has the ability to block the uh, generation of uh, ROS uh, uh, through a number of antioxidant uh, systems. This ROS activate the stress uh, induced uh, MAP kinases such as uh, June kinase and P38 MAP kinases that are respectively responsible for phosphorylation of IRS1 on serine residues leading to AKT, reduced AKT phosphorylation and reduced insulin sensitivity. On the other side, MAP kinase activates PGC1 alpha that upregulates TRIB3, and TRIB3 through another pathway also reduces AKT. So, this I believe it's a new pathway linking uh, ERK5 with the metabolic control of insulin metabolism in, uh, uh, in uh, hepatocytes and uh, you know, creating a new system that could be possibly. Uh, manipulated in uh, this uh, in these patients. So this is my final slide. I would like to acknowledge uh, Giovanni Di Maira, who has worked on uh, ERK5 and hepatocytes. Alessandra has uh, done the work in uh, uh, cholangiocarcinoma. Julia Lori is uh, doing most of the work uh, with the metabolic uh, liver disease together with Giovanni. Elisabetta Rovida is not from our department, it's a long-standing collaboration, and Chiara Raggi is a PhD scientist working on stem cells and cholangiocarcinoma, who has recently joined our faculty. Thank you very much for your attention. Well, thank you to you. I mean, it was a very wonderful presentation. It was a very hard gym for my brain, at least, moving from one pathway to the other. Uh, the, the presentation is open to discussion. Is there any uh, question from the podium or from the floor? If not, I can start with one simple question, probably very stupid. <laughs> you know that there is a lot of discussion between the difference between hepatocellular carcinoma and intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma. There's a lot of overlapping according to the pathologist and to the new theory. Uh, and this is also supported by the data you presented about the RK5. Do you think that this may pave a, a way for a common treatment with the ERK modulation? I think this is a very interesting question. I showed you this data also to show the similarities between the two tumors. Uh, as you know, the, the cellular origin of intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma is still not completely right. clear. Uh, there are some groups that actually think that uh, hepatocytes give rise to intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma. And uh, more recently, there has been the recognition of uh, transitional form of epithelial tumors, the so-called hepatocholangiocarcinomas that represent uh, a challenge in terms of treatment because uh, uh, with our oncologists, we are also doubtful whether to treat with these, uh, uh, to treat these patients with uh, uh, angiogenesis inhibitors like we do for cellular carcinoma or with uh, classical chemotherapy like we do for cholangium. So uh, I think that some of the pathways can possibly be used uh, for both tumors. And uh, uh, I think that also the um, uh, observation that the immunotherapy with the uh, uh, immunotherapy with the immune checkpoint inhibitors uh, potentiates the uh, action of chemotherapy in cholangiocarcinoma as much as it does in hepatocellular carcinoma suggests that there might be some uh, uh, some treatments that could both for both tumors. Okay, thank you. Any other question? Cecilia, I think. Yeah. Hello. Thank Hello. you very much, Professor Mara. It's very nice presentations. I learned a lot. Actually, I have uh, two questions, but the first one I think you already um, showed about the cancer cell straight. 
in which uh, you show us that um, upon the silencing, you saw the um, down regulation of the cancer stem cell markers. But my question is on the oncogenicity of the of the cells. Did you ever try to do like serial dilution of the cells to look at serial transplantation of the cell silence to the mouse model, for example, just to see whether this trait is is taken during the the cells replication, something like that. And then the second one, um, so uh, based on your data, uh, we can see that the cancer cells actually they have like some kind of capacity to defense, right, to survive. So when you block one molecule and then the cells, somehow they have another way to survive. So I would like to ask on your opinion whether it's wise to consider a dual target treatment or co-targeting at least for the molecular target therapy for, for cancer cells. Thank you, Only Those are my questions. Thank you. Yes, I was a little bit, I went a little bit fast with the cancer stem cells. These are very preliminary results, at least for ERK5. Uh, Chiara Raji, my lab, she has developed a system where she cultures uh, cholangiocarcinoma cells as spheroids as she has shown that these cells maintain several characteristics of cancer stem cells. If you uh, inject the cells uh, into mice, the tumors grow faster and earlier than if you uh, inject parental cells. So, so the characteristics of these cells are maintained also for eventual uh, manipulation. Now, in the, in the slides I showed for ERK5, these are very preliminary data. And uh, what we observed, uh, as you probably noticed, is that if we science ERK5, we observed that, that the number of uh, cells that, uh, the number of spheres uh, uh, that are generated, uh, I'm probably better off if I, if I show it to you because uh, it will be easier. Let me find out the slide. Yes, there it is. <clears throat> Can you see it, Cecilia? Yes. Yes. I okay. see, I see. Basically, here the piece of information is that uh -huh. ERK5 is more expressed if you compare spheres with the monolayer. Spheres yeah. are enriched uh -huh. in cancer stem cells. Mm -hmm. If you silence, it's a little bit tiny here, but if, mm -hmm. you, if you silence uh, ERK5, mm -hmm. and you try to make spheres, you get a lower number of spheres than yes. if you use mock transfected cells. Okay. And these are a number. These are a number of. Uh, these are a number of uh, genes that are associated with stemness. Mm -hmm. So you can see nano, yes, yes, SOX4, yes. and SOX2, mm -hmm. and step 3 And you mm -hmm. see that upon uh, silencing of ERK5, uh, all these genes, all these sets of genes, are downregulated. Now, yes. this is just one single slide. We don't want to build uh, <laughs> just uh, as of today a whole story on that. Mm -hmm. But it's actually promising, and uh, we are we will be trying to pursue this. In mm -hmm. terms of the dual inhibition, yes, I think you're right. <clears throat> there is one piece of information that I think is very important. If you, mm -hmm. when you stable transfected cells uh, with inhibitors of ERK5 or MAC5, mm -hmm. after a while. <clears throat> you will observe some clones of cells that are no more responding to the, uh, let's say, to the inhibition because mm -hmm. they overactivate uh, over ERK1-2. So they lose the ability to be uh, slowed down in their proliferation. Mm -hmm. So these two map kinases has, have a sort of like yin-yang by which if you silence one, the other one uh, yes. you know, gets more mm -hmm. active. And so I believe that the, the way where the field is going is dual inhibition or possibly the, uh, an inhibitor that can be broader in terms of the spectrum of activity. Okay, thank you. Uh, any other question? Uh, okay, uh, if not, I think that we must uh, thank you very much, uh, Fabio, for this outstanding lecture. And we'll for sure get in touch soon to, uh, I mean, to see what we can do. Thank you okay. very much, Fabio. Thank you, Claudio.
Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye to everyone. Ciao, ciao. Ciao. Ciao.